If you begin at Acts chapter 2 from verse, okay, let's read that one. Let's read that one. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Let's see the birth of the church. How was the church born? How was the church born? Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Now, when he says, and they continued. No need to explain. Let's, let the Bible explain itself. Go to verse 40. Verse 40. Mm -hmm. Now Peter, remember that this was the day of Pentecost. Do we remember that? It was the day of Pentecost. Stay with me. Don't, don't be this. Just stay with me. This conference is for teaching. Mm -hmm. Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost after the Holy Spirit had come upon them. And then he began to teach. He began to preach. That was Peter's first sermon. So after he had said many things, the Bible now says, and with many other words, if I'm correct, if I remember this chapter of the Bible correctly, he was speaking about the promise of the Holy Spirit before he entered this. And he said to them that this promise is not to you only, but it's both to your children and your children's children and to as many as the Lord we call. Are we together? So it was upon that that the Bible now says, and with many other words, he bore witness. That's what it means to testify. He bore witness and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from what? This perverse generation. So this was Peter's first message. Next verse. Then those who gladly received his word were what? Baptized. That means when he says they gladly received the word, that is they believed. They believed that what he said was true and then they received it and then they became saved. And immediately they were saved, they were what? Baptized. Let's talk about baptism a little. You know there are conflicts in the body of Christ as to whether baptism is necessary to salvation. And whether if you are not baptized, you will, you will not go to heaven. Now, I cannot claim to answer the second question or claim to answer the first in the way that it will be easy for you to take a yes or a no answer. But here is my position. When you read through the Bible, when you read through the Bible, the pattern our ancestors set for us is that every time a man believed and was saved, it followed with what? baptism our ancestors even the Ethiopian eunuch that you would have said is a good opportunity why stress yourself the man was on a chariot for God's sake a chariot and then the evangelist Philip met him on that chariot and said understand that what thou readest and the man said no and then Philip now began to expand to him the scriptures and after Philip had expanded to him, he believed what he had heard. His heart was convicted. And his first response, it was not Philip. His first response with was, here is water. Are you here? Here is water. What is stopping me from being what? Philip would have said, with the motto. And you, they hurry. Your madam, they wait you. You know you are a prince, you are you are an Ethiopian eunuch, you, you are on, on duty. They are not supposed to catch you come down from that chariot. You are in a hurry. Don't worry, it's not important. What did they do? They stopped the chariot. He came down and he did what? Baptized. So baptism might not be a requirement for salvation in the sense that what is required for salvation is clearly given to us in Romans chapter 10. You believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth and then you are saved. Are you here? But part of the salvation journey is that once you have received salvation, part of the things you need to do is that you need to be what? Baptized. So what if somebody receives Jesus, believes, and then he doesn't have an opportunity to be baptized and he dies. I can tell you he will go to heaven. 
But if he has an opportunity to be baptized and he chooses not to, I can't tell you the answer to that question. We know in part. But what I can tell you is that everyone who had opportunity to be baptized in the scripture, our ancestors insisted that they be put in water. And you see, the conference is still running till Sunday. As we finish the morning session, you can sit down with your Bible and come and say, I found one, one, one. And then we'll read it. Are we together? And then the Bible says, and that day, about what? 3,000 souls were what? Added to the church. So it's on the basis of that, that it was those 3,000 souls, on the basis of that, that the Bible now begins to now discuss the other things that we are seeing in that chapter. 42 now. So, 3,000 joined how many that were in the upper room? How many were in the upper room? 120. So 3,000 joined the 120 and they became 3,120. And when they joined them, it did not distort their educational system. Are you here? The 3,000 joined them. That's why the Bible says, and they, what? Continued. So as those 3,000 joined them, they didn't change the educational system system to, to satisfy the 3,000. Are you here? They maintained their regiment and their discipline. The 3,000 were the ones that needed to conform. Hmm. You are not hearing me. If you are hearing me in your spirit, your heart will be burning now. Because in our own circles, what we do is that the ones that are coming from outside, we want our system to suit them. So we are altering many things, shifting many things, changing many things because people are coming from outside. So even if you've been there for many years, you are not becoming anything, then the ones that are coming from outside, what is most likely happening is that now we are mutating to look like the people outside. But in this case, the day the church was born, because this is the first time that we now see a congregation beyond the 120, is the day the church was born, on the day of Pentecost. The 3,000 were added, and the what? Continued. And the first thing you see there is that they continued in the apostles' teaching. The next thing was what? Fellowship. The next thing, breaking of bread. And the next thing, prayers. Let's go further. 43. Then fear came upon every soul. Fear. And this is not the kind of fear that is, uh, that is administered by demon spirits. It's not the kind of fear that Adam experienced in the Garden of Eden. Where he heard the feet of the Lord in the Garden and he ran to hide. Not that kind of fear. The fear the Bible speaks about here is what is called reverential fear. Reverential fear. For instance, in the, in, in, the, in the tabernacle of Moses or in the church in the wilderness, they had a tabernacle. They had the inner court, the outer court, and the holy of holies. The reason God put a curtain on the holy of holies was to generate what? reverential fear to, for you to know that there are certain things in the assembly that are sacred and if you are going to handle sacred things there is a way you must prepare yourself to be able to enter into that administration this is the same thing dear brother David was saying when he said who can ascend the mountain of the Lord. Are you here? Who can stand where? In his holy place. Mo David was saying that there is a way to approach when you are dealing with sacred matters. 
He now begins to say, he that has clean hands, he that has a pure heart, he that has not lifted up his soul to what? Vanity. There must be some kind of reverence, reverential fear. And you see, I am afraid. I think I was listening to success leading prayers and I said, this boy entered into my notes. I am afraid. I'm afraid hmm? that reverential fear is lost on the church. The church in our generation, nothing is sacred anymore. Nothing. Nothing is sacred. Everything has become common. And you know, these things are being taught in the name of God just loves you. God is your father. God is your father. The God who is your father is also your king. The God who is your father is also your judge. The God who is your father is also your lawgiver. He has laws. Somebody is saying, eh, but the, the veil was torn in the temple. Yes. Meaning that it's no longer only one man that has access. What changed was, the require, was, was access. The requirements for access didn't change. Mm, the requirements for access didn't change. Because just as the priest needed to be covered in blood to go in jesus had to shed his blood to grant you what access and just as holiness is required for the priest to be able to do business behind the veil a man who is not holy cannot ascend to the holy place he can't do business with god he can't those things have not changed but access has been opened we no longer need to wait for one man to go before the Lord. Every one of us can approach the throne of mercy. I mean the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace for help in the time of need. So, when they listened to Peter's sermon, they had seen the Holy Ghost descend. Heard a man who was normally fearful give a sermon with such power conviction struck hearts and one of the things that came upon them is that they were what afraid fear reverential fear let me ask you in your own in truth and in honesty is there any reverential fear for the church in our generation i'm talking about men outside is there any single awe and reverence for the church there's none in our day there was a time that people will walk into the church and they they have this they they, they see a church there's this there's this reverence but now it's not like that in fact if you tell some people that somewhere that uh, uh i'm a christian say i beg i beg now so everybody they talk and so everybody i beg no all there's nothing about us now this generation of believers that strikes fear in the hearts of men because every time you begin to erode truth you erode truth reverence and honor will be lost will be lost he says, and many wonders and signs were done through who? The apostles. Next verse. Now, all who believed were what? Together. And had all things what? In common. All who believed. Next verse. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone did what? Had need. Next verse. So, continually... I mean, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and what? Simplicity of heart. Next verse. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And who added to the church? And the Lord added to the church daily as many as added to the church daily 
those who were what being saved the church was one, god was one what adding them so it implies that if the church is doing what she's supposed to be doing the spirit of god the spirit of the living god who is the governor over the assembly will begin to imprint upon the hearts of men and men will begin to find the houses of truth in the city 